In this video, I'd like to walk through a full truss analysis that you'll have to do similar to the one in your final project. We'll put a load, we'll call it P, on our truss, and we'll have our reaction forces at the pin and the roller, both of which will be P over 2. A good practice when identifying the truss is to give all the joints names. This helps us to identify the members and the joints when we're doing our analysis. We'll start at the left-hand side of the truss, realizing that the forces in member A, H, are going to be identical to the forces in E, F because of the symmetry of the truss we've designed. We'll start with the method of joints at A. We draw a free body diagram If we draw a free body diagram at A, we have the reaction force of P over 2 acting on the joint. We have the tensile force of member AB pulling on the joint, and the force of member AH also pulling on the joint. Now, I always like to draw my forces pulling away when I don't know what they are from the joint. And this one's sure that members that are in tension have positive values and members that are in compression have negative values. So using equilibrium in the y direction, we have FAH side 45 degrees plus P over 2 is equal to 0 or FAH is equal to P over 2 sine 45 degrees. Now, for the rest of this video, it's important to note that the sine of 45 degrees is equal to the cosine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over square root of 2. So here we have FAH, sorry, and this one is, is negative. I forgot to, to change the sign. And that negative is important because it indicates that member AH is in compression, not tension. So FAH is equal to P root 2 over 2, negative. Let's go ahead and write this over here. P root 2 over 2. We can also solve for FAB using the X equilibrium. So you look at the sum of the forces in the X direction. FAB plus FAH times cosine of 45 degrees is equal to zero. So FAB, because cosine 45 is root two, 1 over root 2, and FAH is P over P times root 2 over 2, then FAB is just going to be equal to P over 2. Now because this is positive, we know that um, member AB is going to be in tension. Moving forward, we can quickly identify that member BH is a zero force member. If we drew our force diagram at B, we can see that there's going to be no Y direction forces to oppose um, on the joint at B to oppose the force of BH. And so we know that BH is a zero force member. Um, identifying zero force members quickly helps us to speed up the analysis of our truss. The other analysis technique that we use in, the, I, in finding the forces in trusses is the method of sections. So I'm going to make a cut on the left hand side of my truss and draw the free body diagram of the section on the left hand side. We have A, B, and H. Here we have the force of member HG acting on our body, force of member HC acting on our body, and the force of member BC acting on our body with our resultant force of P over 2. So here we have three equilibrium equations. We have the sum of the forces in the X, the sum of the forces in the Y, and the sum of the moments has to be equal 0 for this body that I've created by cutting my truss. Let's do the moment about point H because that eliminates two unknowns. This distance is 5 
inches and this distance is five inches. So we have um, a positive moment. We have the force of BC times five inches minus P over two times five inches is equal to zero. Well, this tells us that the force of BC has to be equal to P over two. Now that might have been obvious because if BH is a zero force member, then these forces have to be equal to each other. Now let's look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. We have P over two acting on, we have P over two acting on our body at A, and we have negative FHC times sine of 45 acting at H. And the sum of those is going to be zero. And so we can see that FHC is going to be equal to P over 2 root 2. So this is a positive number, and so HC is in tension where HA was in compression. The last member that we need to solve for, we can use the sum of the forces in the x direction. We have FHG is equal to oops. We have FHG plus FHC times cosine of 45 or over root 2. Um, plus FBC is equal to zero. Plugging in the numbers we know, we have FHG plus P over two plus P over two is equal to zero, or FHG is equal to negative P. So that negative, again, tells us that this member on the top, HG, is going to be in compression, and the force in it is going to be equal to the load on our, our member. It's important to note that the forces on the right-hand side of the truss are going to be equal to the forces on the left-hand of the truss due to symmetry. We could continue doing our force analysis, and we can use the method of joints or the method of sections to find that the force in CG is equal to P.